FBI Director Christopher Wray waving a huge red flag about the threats of attacks on the homeland, saying the threats to the U.S. have reached unprecedented levels since October 7th. Let's talk about now with Donnell Harvin, former Chief of Homeland Security and Intelligence for the District of Columbia, and Jamil Jaffer, former Associate White House Counsel to President George W. Bush, handling intelligence community matters. First of all, I don't feel very comfortable hearing the FBI Director having unprecedented or novel moments that he's never seen before. Not a very ringing endorsement of our collective safety. Why is this happening now, particularly post-October 7th, here in the United States? You know, he's clearly hearkening back to uh, George Tenet, who, who actually testified to the 9-11 Commission about the system blinking red. And so he's really uh, honing in on two types of th threats. The first is the international threat from foreign terrorist organizations, or FTOs, uh, that have sworn uh, attacks against the U.S. and are trying to inspire people within the U.S., which is the second one. So it's a domestic threat uh, coming from people who are inspired by the, uh, the events that are going on in Israel, uh, Hamas's uh, mis- and disinformation that are online. And so when you look at the threat picture, it's rare that you have threats coming from overseas as well as from the homeland simultaneously. Well... If he's seeing blinking red lights everywhere, sadly there are not agents everywhere, nor is there the collective workforce power to handle everything. And so that might be a national security huge threat. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, Danelle's exactly right. I mean, there are t threats from the outside. It's not just the Israel-Hamas war, right? The world is essentially on fire. We've got a war in the heart of Europe as well. We've got threats in the Indo-Pacific from China and the like. And... On December 31st, we're about to lose our most critical intelligence collection tool, Section 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. If Congress doesn't act in the next three weeks, we're going to lose our best ability to collect on these very terrorists, these very foreign threats. That's going to be a disaster. So if the system is blinking red and this tool goes away, I mean, red is even close to the color we're going to face uh, in, with potential threats to home. How is the tool being used right now? So what we do is, under Section 702, we collect against foreign intelligence targets overseas. It can't be used to collect against Americans, only overseas threats, and only non-Americans located overseas. What about social media? That's obviously not going to be, is that enveloped in that whole conversation? Open source isn't, isn't the use for this. You can collect open source just, you know, out there on the Internet. Anybody can go out and read it. This is for the emails, the phone calls of terrorists, spies, foreign government officials, and the like. Well, speaking of social media, of course... A lot of the information that's coming in that can either radicalize people or further divide people and and foster a lot of the disinformation and outright lies with an eye towards propaganda is happening online. Um, when you look at that and see how it is flourishing, how public sentiment is based on it in so many ways, what concerns you? You know, the world is upside down. Right. Like I woke up two weeks ago and I saw that bin Laden was right and bin Laden letters were trending and I and I didn't know what world I was in. And so when you can radicalize normal Americans, especially our youth, to take to the streets, we have American children, you know, youth dressing up like uh, terrorists, waving the Hamas flags in the streets of our cities, on the campuses. Um, you know, you have a problem. It all stems from the Internet. It's unregulated. Uh, it penetrates this mis and disinformation and hate. Uh, it penetrates deep into uh, the social media networks. And it's almost impossible to bring these, these people back from the brink. What we don't know is if anyone's going to act on it. And that's key, right? And so it's key to the FISA as far as people may be communicating with foreign terrorist organizations. We saw this in the mid-2010s with ISIS communicating actively with U.S. persons here on our soils as well as, you know, looking at what people are doing on social media and seeing if they're radicalizing and mobilizing to violence. You know, one has to, I always quote this all the time, I know your report, that Tom Cruise movie about the precog deciding whether you've actually committed the crime or not, and can they act on your thought that you might do something? We don't want that to happen in this country, obviously. Um, but this idea of what might happen is the real conundrum for law enforcement. When you've got all the different threats that are posed, if there are some existing, and then figuring out which to identify and then thinking about, well, at some point, is there going to be a more deeper conversation about surveilling American citizens as a result? Well, it's exactly right. I mean, look, one uh, on this point about, tic about, about, about what's happening online, right? A lot of this is happening on TikTok, a Chinese-owned and operated platform. It's no 
coincidence that this kind of radicalization, this Osama bin Laden letter thing that all these, all these American kids started getting into happened on a Chinese-built platform. The algorithm encouraged that. But beyond that, on this question about surveilling Americans, you're exactly right. That's why Section 702 in this law actually protects Americans overseas and in the United States against being surveilled by the government under that authority. If you want to surveil an American anywhere in the world, you have to go to a court and get a court order, whether that's from a judge on the FISA court. And by the way, those are regular district judges who just mm-hmm. serve on that court. Or you have to go to a federal court, a federal judge, and get a warrant like you would in, in, the, in a criminal proceeding. So the only thing this tool can be used for is for surveilling foreigners located overseas when they're engaged in terrorist activities, intelligence activities, or the like. Now, it's true that you might get communications with Americans, right? But that's exactly when you want to know. When these terrorists are talking to Americans or spies are talking to Americans, that's when you want to know. And then if you want to collect on them, got to go get a court order. Sounds like the volume of the possibilities um, might be ripe for a system to perhaps be abused or be the gift or the curse. Who knows what will end up. Thank you for both of you for coming here tonight. I appreciate it. Danelle and Jamil, thank you so much.